And we can see that there's this strange historical linkage between the 26,000 year long procession of the equinox, these four fixed signs, prophecy, and this weird transmutation of the human race. Volcanelli promises us that we're going to go through this transmutation. There's the galaxy. Ah, that's the Black Madonna in Shark Cathedral. Now, everybody wonders what the Black Madonna is and why she's in all of the uh, Gothic cathedrals. You know, it's strange. Here, here you are in Europe where everybody's white, and they're worshiping this black lady, you know, and they probably didn't even know there were black people when this was built. Um, very strange. But we now know that all of this is symbolic and that the black Madonna is really Isis. Isis was black, she was Egyptian, and she was worshipped all through Europe before Christianity. And they kept these in the churches. They tried to destroy them, but they, people wouldn't let them destroy them. They just kept bringing them back. They'd come in, they'd tear down the black, burn it, and then somebody else would carve a new one and stick it up. And, and they could never keep the black Madonnas down. So the black Madonna is actually the center of the galaxy, which is, of course, a gigantic black hole. And Isis is the creator of all things. She created all the suns in the galaxy. This is what the, is attributed to her. And so she's the great goddess of alchemists and of the ancients. Uh, if you, in Paris, right where Notre Dame stands today, for 4,000 years was an altar to Isis. The island that Notre Dame sits on, Paris, Par Isis, the island of Isis. That's what Paris means. Okay, so everyone came to this little island, which was shaped like a boat, like a vesica Pisces. And they would come and they would worship. And when the Catholics came, they, uh, the Christians came, they didn't know what to do, so they couldn't get rid of her. They tried. They, they killed everybody, and she kept coming back, and they, they tried to stamp her out, and she kept coming back, and, and, and she wouldn't let go. Because it's primal. It's, it's, it's this primal thing that, that you can't shake. And so instead of trying to let her go, after a while, wisely, they gave up and took her in as a goddess, sort of. They made her the mother of God. They made her Mary Magdalene, the wife of Jesus, maybe, or the, 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 uh, the holy prostitute. And so today she still sits there, you know, in the churches, very regal, very black, and very odd. This is an old alchemical drawing, just to prove my point, that the alchemists knew about the center of the galaxy. When I found this one, I really got blown away. So these are, this is the, the power of, of the father, and this is the power of the mother. The moon is the mother, the sun is the father. They concentrate on the crystal of the great pyramid. This is transmuted down into the four signs of the zodiac. And you see this little odd thing here? It's, that's at 60 degrees off the angle, okay? The galaxy sits 60 degrees off the angle of the solar system. So that little drawing right there shows you that they know what we're talking about. Now, I'm going to get into the great tree of knowledge and the wisdom that has been denied us by someone. Someone who does not want us to have this knowledge. Who this someone is... I don't know. I wish I did. You know, um, John Lash, the great Nag Hammadi scholar, he says, he says the Nag Hammadi texts, which were found 2,000 years ago in Egypt, or they were buried 2,000 years ago in Egypt and found in 1947. And what's great about the Nag Hammadi is they haven't been tainted by anyone. No pope, no politician, no historian has rewritten anything in there. So we're, we're reading exactly what they wanted us to read 2,000 years ago. Okay? Nobody's got their meat on it. You know, no spin. The Nagamati says that about 1,600 years ago before them, or about 3,600 years ago, the earth was invaded by something called the Archons, which is close to the Anunnaki. And they don't say they're beings. They, they, they describe it more like a virus, a, an off-planet virus. And these archons came, 
And what these archons are is they do not possess the divine essence that we possess. And they're really jealous of us for that. And so they're creating a world, this is what the Nag Hammadi says, a simulated world all around us. It's all simulated. And what it is, it's trying to show that they can create everything that the God has created, the beautiful earth and the flowers and everything. They can do just as good a job as nature can do, only they do it fake. And the point of the archons, according to Nag Hammadi, is to make you think that their reality is the reality, not the real reality. So I suspect that's who told us we can't have the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Because once you understand what is going on here, you can free yourself of the archons. And I believe the archons are here. And I, I, I believe they're everywhere. And I think they are a virus. I think they get inside of us. And they make us think that the real, the fake world is real. And that's why as our virtual economy collapses all around us, this fake economy that isn't real, isn't based on anything, and we're all committing suicide and, and killing ourselves and, and, and chastising everyone for losing all the money when we never had the money to begin with, it was all fake. It's all fake. Stock market's fake. It's just fake. It's all phony. No, it's nothing of it is real. The only thing that's real is food, love, community, all the things the archons don't want you to do. You ever notice that every time people try to get together, somebody screws it all up? You ever notice that? Every time things start happening right, some force comes in and disrupts everything and everything falls apart. That's the archons. They don't want us to find out what's going on. And they rule this world. And I, I, I'm not real happy with the archons. So I've decided that it, even if the archons are going to kill me, I'm going to release a secret. And if you stay tuned to sacredmysteries.com over the next... Um, Next eight months, we're releasing the real secret of alchemy. And I'm talking about the real secret, which is an elixir of life that can take your lifespan to two, three, four, five hundred years. We've kept this a secret for a long time because every time one of us raised up our heads to try to teach a secret of alchemy, the oh, mysterious car crashes and you know, weird stuff. I can't tell you how many people I've known that knew the secret of alchemy who are not here right now. And, um, and people say, well, aren't you afraid to release a secret? And I said, well, yeah, of course I'm afraid. But I, I tell you what, I think so much is happening right now, I don't think that they can, they're too confused. There's too many holes in the pipe. We're trying to close all the leaks, so they can't do it. And so the place is getting flooded, and, and, and the least concern is us. We're like, you know, they got terrorists and they got global warming. They got so many problems. And so Robert Cox, who's a, a practical alchemist, good friend of mine, uh, a writer of several books, has decided to come out. And over the next few months on Sacred Mysteries, we're going to release The Secret of Alchemy. But I'm going to give you a primer course today so you can understand what it is he's doing. And you will understand what this is about. I guarantee it. If you don't, ask me. I will explain it even further. All right. Let's talk about the apple. What is it about this apple that makes somebody so afraid of you to look at it? Okay? Well, for one thing, it was an apple that made Newton discover gravity. Right? Fell on his head while he was sitting under a tree. Apples are everywhere, actually in this science. I'm going to explain to you why. If you notice, the apple, I'm like, I'll, tell, I'll tell you one little story before I tell you about the apple. To get into Pythagoras' school in Greece, two, three thousand years ago, you had to go through all of these tests. And the final test was you had to talk to Pythagoras himself. So you would come in and it would just be you and him. And Pythagoras had taken an apple, and he would cut it 
right here about 19.5 degrees. You take the half that you cut, we start eating it. And he'd show you the part that's been cut, right? He'd show it to you, and he'd sit there like this, with his hand like this, eating and listening to you, probably sounding like an idiot to him. And if you never said once in this final interview, hey, Pythagoras, have you ever noticed that if you cut an apple at 19.5 degrees, the five pentagonal seeds of the apple are visible, and they look like a man? Right? If you didn't say that, you didn't get in the school. Because that meant you weren't aware enough or to perceive what was really going on. But that's not the secret. The secret is that an apple is a higher dimensional object. It's a hyperdimensional form. And what I mean by that is that everybody and everything in the world is surrounded by an electromagnetic field. All living beings, all planets, all, not all planets, all living planets, all galaxies, all stars have this strange electromagnetic field. This is the Earth's electromagnetic field. Comes in at the North Pole, goes down the center of the Earth, comes out the South Pole, goes around like this, okay? You can go to the North Pole, see the aurora borealis, right? See, that's the collapsing electromagnetic field coming down. You can go down to the South Pole and see it rising up from the South Pole. Quite incredible, actually. Well, you see, the apple has a pole, North Pole, South Pole. It also has, goes down into the core, comes back up, right? See it? And inside the center of that apple is the future of that apple, the seed, which creates more apples and trees, okay? So the center of life, the three-dimensional aspect that is so important to this ap apple, which is its future, the seeds, is buried down underneath the higher dimensional out, out, uh, outline, the skeleton outline. Just like the three-dimensional seed of life is buried inside this field, okay, the earth, okay? And you have an electromagnetic field. It comes down into the top of your head. It comes down your spine, which is the highest densification of minerals in your body. And it comes out the bottom of the spine, goes around, and comes back down. Spiraling down into your head, down through the spine, out, around, and down through. And this is what you really are, not this. This is not what you really are. This is the mortal, temporal state of what you are. The eternal state is this field. But you know what? If you discover that you have an eternal state that you can explore and work with and divine, guess what? You're going to discover something really important. You're going to discover that you don't die. 